Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. But what I do know, I'm still Angie. This is still 4F Beauty. That's my phone interrupting me as usual at the moment that I'm filming. And you are very welcome. Now hopefully you're watching me in black and white. Panic not. Think of this like the Wizard of Oz. Starts off in black and white, although I think they started in sepia. And then becomes glorious technicolour. Uh, but we don't need to drop a house on a witch in order to steal her shoes. Well, they are pretty shoes. And she was a bad witch. No, no, we're not dropping houses on people. Not this week. Right. Enough silliness. You will have sin from the thumbnail, the title, and if you've read any of it, the description, that this is a collab with the beautiful Alexis, and it is the third collab round of my retro review. It's a retro review. I'm half Welsh, love. Singing and talking is pretty much the same thing for me. Anyway, this month Alexis chose the Viseart Libertine palette as our palette of choice, which I'm really pleased with. This was a gift from my lovely friend Kay. I think so far I've only used it once on screen, but I have used it a lot off screen. You will see, when we get to the Technicolor bit, just why this is one of my favourite eye palettes. But, in order to get there, Sammy's here to tell you. It's time to grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and get comfy. Here comes Technicolor. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Okay, I would have told you in the intro that this is now the third episode of the Retro Review collab that I do with the lovely Alexis. Now, I've gone deaf in this ear this morning. I think I got water in it in the shower and uh, I'm having issues. So if I sound a bit odd, it's because I sound a bit odd to me and I'm trying to make me sound more like me, which might make me sound not like me. Welcome to my scattered brain. Right, um, I sent Alexis a list of palettes because I'd originally intended this, well it was originally um, a solo series that I was doing on my channel. Um, so I had a list of palettes that I wanted to include in this series at some point. And obviously I sent that list to Alexis and she's gone through and she's picked each month which palette we're choosing. And I'm really pleased today because she's chosen the Viseart Libertine palette. And this was a gift from my lovely friend Kay. Isn't that just me all over that palette? Really? I mean, could you get more of a me colour scheme if you tried? So, this is the palette that we're creating our look from today. Um, the only rule is you can only use this palette. Obviously, if you want to do like a gel eyeliner or something, that's fine. But the bulk of the look, of the eye look, has to be done with this palette. Um, I'd asked Alexis to collab on a pic review, photo inspiration review, which is one of my series that I have on my channel. Probably the, the most successful series that I've got on my channel actually. 
uh, and she enjoyed it so much she said can we do a collab together every month and I'm like yep that sounds great I've been wanting to resurrect my um, retro review how do you fancy doing that and she loved that idea because the, the whole point of the retro review I've got a crap ton of palettes um, I love makeup I love collecting it um, and with my pain insomnia I sometimes buy things that I don't know that I'm going to buy but I wanted, to, all too often with the majority of makeup channels, particularly the bigger ones, that get sent all the PR, they can always use the most current palette. They can use it once or twice, then they declutter it. Because they've not had to buy it. Apart from a few things that I've had as gifts, like this one from Kay. Um, I've bought all of my palettes. So I want to get my money's worth out of them. Plus, I bought these palettes because I like them. And why am I not using them if I like them? It, it's, it's also kind of an anti-consumerism message that I'm trying to <sighs> pull myself into. Because I've pretty much got every single colour under the rainbow now. In a palette or a single somewhere. So I just want to enjoy using what I've got and then just buying palettes that really call to me. So, this does remain a teaching channel. I'll talk more about Alexis at the end when I do my wrap up. Uh, the middle bit of this is going to be showing and teaching you how to put the eyeshadow on. Um, because it's a teaching channel, I come in very close, just my eyes on screen. Uh, there's a number of reasons for this. Mainly it's if your eyesight's not that good and you're watching me on a phone screen, you can still see what's happening. But also because if I have to pause because of pain, it's easier to do a cut without you realising that I've actually had to pause and cut a section out. So... Um, I'm going to insert a clip in just a moment which will talk you through the difference between deep set and hooded lids. Again, that would be just my eyes on screen so you can see exactly what it is I'm referring to. And then I'll be back to apply some of these pigments to my eyelids. Uh, the one kind of downside to being that closely into my eyes is that when I look down to pick up more pigment or clean the brush off uh, there is a good chance that you will get a wonderful view of my widow's peak but I have been told by my wee Scottish Viking friend Will Venus that um, <clears throat> if, if you have a widow's peak put into a wig it makes the wig more expensive so my hairline is more expensive Right, enough silliness, here's the clip and I'll see you at the other end of it. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated, I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Crime Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC Paint Pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily, or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. 
then there are three different skin tone shades as well so you should be able to find one that will work for you um, I apply this with a flat brush just a very light layer and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease I have to cut onto the upper lid not just through the socket and if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight and if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get so what are the workarounds if you have hooded lids get a brush something like this or a pencil brush sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using just sit back relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Right, um, the only issue I have with this is that I don't actually have the name sheet for it. Having looked online, these are called Rebellion, Unleashed, Empowered, Resistance, Boundless Chant uh, Defiance Shameless Debauched But I will call them 1, 2, 3, 4 to 6, 7 to 9 um, Just to make things a little bit easier for me uh, I'm going to start off by using my Rolling Lang Little Chic Pro eyeshadow brush. It's going to just back out a fraction. There we go. Um, this is a it's a blending brush, but it's wider than it is deep. So it's not quite a round brush because I want to have slightly more control. So this, when they're oval like this, if you use them flat you have more control over how far it blends but then if you want it to blend like a big round fluffy brush does you just turn it up on its end and then you've got the full width of the brush again whatever the width of the head of the brush that's touching your eye that's how far out it will blend 
Okay. Um, I did have nice pointy long nails of mine that had actually grown, but then I managed to snap two of them the other day when I was cleaning. So, yeah, me had to cut them all down. Right. I'm going to start off in the purple, which is shade number nine. Now, I always hold the brush at the end to put as little pressure on my lid as possible. If the brush arm is long enough, or the handle is long enough, just brace it against your palm like that. Just gives you a little bit more control at this end as to how, how far it blends, you know, or how wobbly it is. Now, 20 and 30 year olds love the windscreen wiper blend. And 47. I've lost over 200 pounds. Skin of my eyes moves. Uh, but I know slim teenagers that, that have the same issue. So what we do here is the Viennese Waltz of blending, which is a natural turn towards the nose, a fleckle when we get there, and then a reverse turn to come back again. This very gently manipulates the lid around in both directions so that you don't get that telltale white striping that you can get when you do the windshield wiper and your lid folds over on itself. Okay, I'm going to start about halfway between my natural crease and my brow and I'm just going to start building this purple up. With strong colours like this you're much better to start softly and build them up slowly rather than go whoomph in with a whole load of pigment. I have to admit these Viseart shadows are lovely. I've got quite a few Viseart palettes now. Kay got me started by sending me this one. I just love the formula so much. They're not very dusty, so you don't get a huge amount of fallout. You don't get a massive amount of kick up in pan either, which is nice. Um, but they definitely still have enough pigment that you can build the colour up to where you want it. And as you know, purples are difficult colours to create. So for this purple to be this smooth, regular viewers will know here and here on both eyes. That's hubby if you can hear him. Um, I, no, you're not. Um, I get very dry patches just there and there. Uh, and sometimes I can struggle getting eyeshadow to actually blend on them. But as you can see, this is going absolutely lovely. Hubby's got a day off today. And he's currently emptying the kitchen bins for me. Without being asked, he's such a good chap. Yeah, been together nine years, married for seven, and I've got him fully trained. Although, to be fair, he was reasonably well trained when he came to me. Reasonably. Right, um, I always do the same colour on the other eye before moving on to the next colour. Because there are times when... Um, although obviously I know the shape of my eyes and I know what shapes I need to put the powder down in so that they match because your eyes are not symmetrical <laughs> not sure Jimmy Chuck any photoshop them that way um, but there are times when with my fibro I can get just random swellings random water retention uh, and also with hay fever as well, I can get quite puffy lids sometimes. And there are times when that happens, you'll notice that I, when I do these looks, if you've watched very many of them at all, you'll notice that I sit back, relax the brows, because you don't walk around like this all day, unless you've had very bad Botox. Um, and I just make sure they look the same. 
because the problem is if you do have a bit of puffiness and you've put all of the colours on sometimes it can be difficult to tell which of the colours need the shape adjusting to match whereas by doing it like this it's so much easier right, I'm going to clean the brush off on a clean washcloth I've stopped using colour switches, they're far too harsh on the bristles, especially of natural hair brushes. I'm really annoyed, I went to go and buy some more of these because I love them so much, the, um, the Ron and Anglica one, because they're only two quid. But they're just some of the best quality brushes I've ever tried. Um, I'm going to go into, sh into the deep navy now, which is uh, shadow number seven. And I'm going to put that just below the purple. Um, yeah, so I went to the the site, the UK site that I get them from, and it's got a big notice up saying, uh, sorry, we're closing, we've closed this site, any queries on orders, email this address, um, but we're going to have it so that we offer UK shipping on our American sites because Royal Melanical have a number of different brands. They have like the Moda brushes come under Royal Melanical, these Chic Pro ones are Royal Melanical. And whereas on the British site they're all under the one website, in America they all have separate websites, but they only offer. Uh, shipping to America and Canada, I think it is. So, I go across to the American sites thinking, great, because now this means I'm going to have to pay more in postage for it. And I'm probably going to have to watch how much I order, because I'll get clobbered with bloody tax on arrival as well. Go to the sites to order some. They said I haven't got it set up to send it to the UK yet. And I'm just like, do you want my money or not? Very, very annoying. Don't close the UK site until the American site can fully furnish our needs. Right, you can see that's blending really nicely together. I'm just going to clean the brush off so there's no extra pigment on it. And just buff. Where those two colours meet. I might pick up a little bit of the purple actually, just to help blend it into that blue a little bit more. There. I like that. And now to repeat on the other eye. How's your day been? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. And if it hasn't, then I sincerely hope tomorrow is a better one for you. And if you're at the start of your day watching me over your breakfast, or in your shower, like Christopher JMUA does, I hope your day is as fabulous as you are, darling. That's Hubby coming back with the bees. Am I still sneaking efficiently? Yes, dear. Sneaky, sneaky. Hubby sneaks like he's in a Scooby Doo cartoon. Knees up and everything. Literally, knees up and everything. <laughs> For those of you wondering, that was Hubby destroying a cardboard box. Mm, I tore it to shreds. being particularly noisy about it. Sorry, I didn't realise it was that loud. Mm -hmm. I'll creep away now. Mm -hmm. With my knees up and my hands together. Yes, dear. As I was saying, 
I do like this blue and I like that it builds up or you can build it up slowly because all too often with deeper colours the problem with deeper colours is you have more colour pigment than you have blending agents like talc or mica um, and that's where you end up with the issues that they don't blend well, they skip, they go patchy. If you look there, there's a bit of patchiness just here, but that's because it's one of my super dry areas where I almost get like an eczema on it. So I often struggle just here. But as you can see, a little bit of patience and a bit of extra blending. And it sorts it out. Hmm. Right, again, clean the brush off. And then I'm going to go into, it's actually one of the shimmers, but I want to use it. It's the green, so shade number eight. And I want to use this just here on the sort of outer third of the mobile lid just blending it in slightly into the navy the reason I've got both eyes shut here is because I'm blinding that eye so I can't see what the hell I'm doing anyway I'm relying very much on muscle memory I'm just going to bring that about halfway along, I did go a little bit too far in actually. Never mind, I'll sort that out in a minute. Didn't mean to go quite that far along the lid. No accidents, no mistakes, just happy little accidents. Welcome to Bob Ross. If you um, apply a shimmer, with a blending brush. Expect fallout as you can see because it's not it's not designed to be blended with, it's designed to be packed on. Just do my usual flick up at the side there. Um, but it will actually blend and you'll probably find it will blend easier than some of the matte shadows. That's why you'll very often find a black in a palette with some shimmer in it. Because the shimmer pigments will dissipate as you blend. This is just a pad with micellar water on to tidy up. Yeah, the colour will dis the, the the shimmer will dissipate as you blend, but will just make it that little bit easier to blend the black or whatever the deeper colour it's been added to. You'll find that in a lot of palettes where they're not uh, particularly sure of how well their palette is going to actually perform you'll find they'll put shimmers into the darker shades. Right, going to use this flat packer brush next. Never ever go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. You will kill the pigment, okay? But once I've got the pigment on the brush, I will be wetting it partly to intensify the shine and partly to help minimise some of the fallout. Now I'm going to use this Fix Plus spray from Makeup Obsession. Um, you can use any spray. You can use a priming spray like um, MAC, Mario Badescu. You can use a priming spray. 
you can use a setting spray, a finishing spray, you can even save an empty bottle and just put fresh water in it each day. Just only ever go into a pressed pigment with a dry brush. So I'm going to go into shade 6, which is the sort of burgundy, ready brownie kind of shade. So you can see I've packed both sides of the brush. Give it a bit of a squirt. Now, this ferrule here is now wet. So tuck it into your knuckles and spin to dry it off. Because the last thing we want is moisture getting down here and loosening the glue that holds those bristles. Otherwise we will end up not with a brush, but a very expensive stick. Right, I'm going to apply this just to the inner part of my mobile lid. Just bring it to about there, I think. Now, with the lid this side, I've got super, super deep creasing here, as you can see. This is damage caused from when I was five or six years old, when my eye was pulled around at the opticians, the ophthalmic hospital. So, I have to break my own rule about not pulling your lid around, because otherwise the pigment just collects loosely in those creases and then as it dries up it ends up getting in my eye and down my face it's very painful and very unsightly what I do to ensure that I do as little damage as possible mark how far I want the shimmer to come out to and then stretch the lid just so far as the creasing is flattened out and as quickly and efficiently as possible apply the pigment to the mark we made and then gently pop it back dry the brush off, pick up a wee bit more of that pigment and then just fluff the edge a little bit so it matches this one. Dry the brush off again and now I'm going to go into the gold which is shadow or shade 2. This is much firmer pressed than the other shades, the other shimmers. Again, dry the ferrule off. And then I'm going to apply this to that middle section of the lid. Just blending it over the green and then pulling some of that burgundy across onto the start of the gold there. And I'm just going to use the tip of the bristles just to fluff the edges and just get a nice blend going there. Hmm. I like that a lot. So then we'll pack some, dry the brush off, pack some more pigment on. Same thing this side. My um, my friend Will, Will Venus, uh, has started to play with makeup. So I sent him some of my decluttered palettes. Because if you don't know if you're going to enjoy it, there's no point spending out a fortune on buying a load of palettes and stuff. 
you might as well use some of my declutter bits then you can work out what sort of colours you like and you know which sort of palettes you want to be interested in because if you're only interested in blues and greens there's no point buying I don't know, modern renaissance for example so it's really lovely though watching him starting to play with colour but uh, he did message me going, you make this look so easy. It's like, mm, I've been doing it a lot longer than you have, love. Mm. Although to be fair, I only really got majorly into makeup about six years ago. Uh, did my makeup for my wedding and I got hooked on playing with makeup. So. Okay, I really, really like this look so far. Okay, I'm going to pause you, my loves, and I'm going to go and do my brows and put some foundation and stuff on and base products. And I will be back to finish this eye look off. Now, uh, for me, I've got a bit of a wait for you. It's going to be instant. So I'll see you hmm, right now. Hey, I'm back. Okie dokie. I used shade number three, the uh, sort of ready brown, to do my eyebrows today. And as usual, I used my pink honey, uh, strawberry sherbet honey glue to set brows into place. Right, grabbing my spectrum. A07 brush. I'm going to dip into the middle shade, number five, the red one. I'm just going to run that very lightly along the lower lash line. Sorry, I had a sip of coke. And uh, I'm now hiccuping. I'm fine with an energy drink, but you give me a sip of coke and that's it. I hiccup like mad. Or burp, or both. Hiccup burps, they're fun. Clean the brush off. And I'll grab a nice fluffy brush. Let's grab this one. It's clean, it's just stained. And I'm going to go into shade number four, which is the sort of sand, like you can see on this now. It's kind of a sandy brown. Actually, I might get a different brush. Let's grab this one. This is a Royal Identical Sheep Pro Crease Brush. I'm just going to use that to soften that red on the lower lash line. Just smoke it out a little bit. in terms of highlight. Do you know what? I might go into my Jacqueline and use this one because it's super, super pretty. It's called Gleam. 
And I'm just going to use a really cheap old lip brush. Pop a little bit of that up under the tail of the brow. And then on the inner corner. And obviously I like to run mine under the tear duct and start to blend it in with whatever colour I've put under my eye. It just helps brighten the whole eye look back up again. Because obviously we all naturally have dimples here and here which go quite dark. Cause just because of shadows, the way your skull is formed. So just having a little bit of highlight just there makes all the difference. Right, my beautiful ones, I'm going to pause you for one last time. I'm going to mascara, I'm going to chuck some of this on my face, decide what lippy I'm going to use, and I'll be back once again. For you. Instant. See you right now. I'm back. What do we think? Do we like? Do we not like? I use the same Jaclyn highlighter, but this is my look with the Viseart Libertine palette. Uh, the lipstick is the NARS Audacious in shade Angela because I just thought a hot pink lip would really, really make the eyes pop. Still practicing that. Right, Alexis, uh, she's genuinely one of the nicest people I've been fortunate enough to meet. Um, there's only been a couple of absolute screaming ab dab bitches that I've come across. Uh, but she's absolutely not one of them. Um, she's, she works in the medical field. So she has a great deal of knowledge when it comes to sorry, you have still got my teeth. You could have told me. Um, she has a great deal of knowledge when it comes to skincare and makeup ingredients. So You know, when she gets these beauty boxes that she un unboxes on her channel, she can give you an awful lot of information about whether the ingredients in the skincare or the makeup that has been provided is actually any good. Um, and, you know, I, mean, I always love learning. I love learning new things. So I, I really appreciate the fact that she goes in depth with these things, but she does it in such a way that it's interesting. It's not like a, a science lesson. Um, and she she's starting to ease out of her comfort zone. I've noticed this a lot with people when they start collabing with me, because I do such nutty looks sometimes. Um, they tend to almost feel like it's safe for them to step outside of their comfort zone. Nona did the same thing. Um, she was very much a neutral queen and now she loves playing with colour. Um, and the previous two collabs on this retro review series that, that we've done. It's weird, I've done looks that she would normally do and she's done looks using colours that I would normally use. Um, so it's really nice to see her playing with new colours and 
enjoying new colours and you know using colours in palettes that she perhaps hasn't even touched yet so you know it's one of the reasons that I started this channel was because everything was a gold eye and a nude lip or a nude eye and a brown lip or you know it was just it was all the same You know, it was like everything was a warm toned neutral eye with a matching lip. You know, and the only time you saw anything remotely outside of that would be Christmas when they might actually stretch to do a smoky eye for a night out, you know? And there are so many beautiful colours in palettes that were not getting used or were only being used as an inner corner pop or an under the lower lash line pop of colour that deserve their own time in the sun, you know? And if I can encourage anyone to stretch outside of their... Almost the makeup rules of how you're meant to look. I, I break all of them. I do. You've got oily combo skin. You can't wear a glowy foundation. Yes, I do. Oh, you're over 30. Love, I'm over 40. I'm over 45, for goodness sake. Oh, you can't put shimmers through your crease. You can, and I do. Ooh, you're over 40. You can't wear bright lipstick anymore. Bitch, this looks good. So if someone tells you, you can't do this because... If it makes you happy, and it makes you smile, and you're not hurting anybody else. You wear whatever the hell you like, girly. And boy. And non-binary. I don't care who you are, what colour you are, what, what religion you are. How you view yourself. If you want to have fun playing with makeup, you crack on. Makeup was originally designed for men. As were high heels and the colour pink. Right. As I was saying, Alexis is a lovely woman. Um, and if you haven't already subscribed to her, you are really missing out. Um, she's already done quite a few giveaways on her channel as well. Because she um, she refuses to use anything made in the PRC because of um, working conditions in that country. And I admire her for that. It's not something I could do. I should do. But so many skincare products that I use which will actually work on my skin and not make it flare up, unfortunately either are made in PRC or have ingredients that are sourced from there so until I can find products that don't come from there that work just as well on my skin unfortunately I have to continue using them um, but very often so you, you'll very often see she'll get really expensive serums and moisturizers and she'll go okay that's going in the giveaway and you think that's like a 60 or 70 dollar serum and you're putting it into a giveaway because because of her principles and I love that she's um I've not mentioned before she wears a hijab she's she's of the Muslim faith so obviously last month she was adhering to Ramadan um, and I said to her given the callings on you for Ramadan and the additional prayers that you have to do and the additional 
um, you know, helping in the community that you have to do during this month of Ramadan. Did you want to skip doing the collab this month because I don't want to put any more pressure on you than you already have. You have a full time job um, and obviously with Ramadan as well. But she was, no, I'm quite happy to continue doing it so that's why there was still a film last month as well. And it shows you how organised the woman is that she can still fulfil something as unimportant as a YouTube collab with me during effectively one of their holiest times. She's just, she's lovely basically. Right, now. If you are one of my regular subscribers, please double check you are still subscribed. YouTube are unsubscribing people, but they are leaving my films in your feed, so it's not obvious that you've been deleted. It's also worth double checking your uh, notification status, because mine keeps getting knocked back to personalised rather than all, which means I don't get any notifications at all. And this is true not just for me, but for all of the channels that you follow. So before you press play on a film, just double check your subscribe button hasn't gone back to red, and double check your notification status is still what you want it to be. If, however, you are new here because you've come from Alexis's channel, or you've tripped over me some other way, Hi, hello, welcome, I hope you've enjoyed it here. Uh, this is a pretty good indication of what you're going to get from me. I blether on about all kinds of things, important and non-important. Uh, my mind occasionally goes for a wander by itself, it usually comes back eventually. Um, so if this is the kind of thing that you like the look of and you think you could watch some more, super easy to do, you hit that red subscribe button. Then you ring my bell, ring my bell, and choose all notifications in the hope that YouTube pull their finger out and actually send them to you. I've also got a lot of other films you can watch. There's obviously the preceding episodes of this series. Um, but I've got lots of product reviews, makeup tutorials, other collabs, challenges, tags. I even read my favourite poem in one of them. So, you know, if you're looking for a little bit of me time, just, you know, I've said it for years, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, pick a playlist, settle back with your coffee and your custard cream and indulge for half an hour of just watching me blether on and apply coloured pigments to my face. Now, if you are one of my regular viewers, I am going to need you, if you haven't already done so, once you've liked this film and left me a little comment on which colours you would have been drawn to in this palette, I'll show you one more time. If you were going to be doing the collab with me today, which of these colours would you have been drawn to using? Once you've done that, and even done maybe a cheeky little share for me, not the turn back time, share kind of share, but the, the sharing of the video. Oh, I've really lost the plot. I need to go and get another coffee. Clearly, the caffeine is starting to run low in my bloodstream. Or the blood is running high in my caffeine stream. Anyway, if you haven't already done so, I'm going to need you to go across to the lovely Alexis's channel and check out her film. See what look she's done. Has she gone for something dark and stormy and sultry and other words ending in he? Look. Well, has she gone for something a bit brighter? Has she gone down the burgundy route? Has she has she made like a, a red and gold look? Has she done a green and red look? Has she done green and gold? The 
only way you can find this out is to go to her channel, watch her film, tell her you're from 4F, and then do all those good YouTuber things, you know, the like, the comment, the share, um, because I'm sure she would appreciate the love. And let's face it, we are the nicest family on YouTube. Alright my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.